Our first story takes us to Indianapolis, Indiana, home of the Indy 500 and Travis Bell, a man totally obsessed with a big orange car from the TV show Dukes of Head. I have all my own teeth. I have a 401k. I even have life insurance. I do not fit the average stereotype of someone who would be nuts about the <laughs> General Lee. How y'all doing? I just love that dang car. I just love General Lee from the Dukes of Hazzard. Just a good old boy. Yeah! Travis has watched every Dukes of Hazard episode more than 500 times just to see the General Lee fly, dissecting the stunt frame by frame. My favorite jump is episode number 23. It's Granny Annie. Bo and Luke are chased in the General Lee into a train yard, and they jump over a moving train effortlessly. Oh, what's the camera crew doing there? They're not supposed to be there. When Travis and me are sitting watching an episode of the Dukes of Hazard, he's giving me information that he thinks that I care about, because I can really care less. This is one of the farthest jumps I have ever found that the General Lee flew. I went to this location and measured it. The car was a magical car. It flew, it was indestructible. It landed and just kept driving away. Travis is so obsessed, he's compelled to travel to locations to measure the actual jumps. 59 feet, three inches. He's gone through two of them little wheels, trying to measure, measure jumps. After 25,000 miles of measuring, Travis was ready to see the General Lee jump one more time. Almost 143 feet. This time, for real. It just felt like the right time to put the General Lee in the air one more time. Be careful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Travis spent more than $33,000, a whole year's salary, to recreate the original jump of the General Lee. Pitch the car away from the crowd. He even tracked down the original stunt driver to make it happen. We built a jumpable General Lee, full roll cage. We just needed a place to do it. And we did it. I thought, this guy is crazy. You know, comes in all tired and everything and says, you know, I'm so, I'm so excited about this. It's going to bring thousands of people to Covington. And I thought, you know, there's no way. I thought he was just feeding me a bunch of crap. <laughs> it took Travis two years to plan the jump. And on June 28th, 2003, he was ready to make the General Lee fly one more time. You had a chance to be... A pseudo hero, the one that jumped the General Lee, or you could have been like, that's the head redneck that just killed 30 people by throwing a big orange car into the crowd. I tell everybody to be prepared. Be prepared. And wham! It took off. You know, you got 2,500 people on this side and 2,500 on this side, and a car coming right down the ramp. You know, 40 feet between the car and the people. Yeah, it was, it, it was a little frightening. All I saw was the roof of the car, and it's going toward the crowd. And I'm thinking, <laughs> I thought that it was over. I'm thinking we are going to kill everybody in the park today. Somehow, some way, when the car hit the ground, did its catapult out of control and landed on all four wheels. It was all gravy. There's no fame in jumping the General Lee one more time. There's no financial gain. We still owe money from jumping the General Lee. It just felt the right thing to do. Come on, give me a yeehaw! Come on! Yee-haw! Yee-haw! Ah, those city slickers just don't get it, do they, Travis?